One of my favorite songs in the show is the love duet that Christine and Raul sing near the end of Act One, which is, of course, All I Ask of You. And what makes this song so brilliant is the simplicity of its music. There's a, there's a misconception, I think, that a lot of people have about composing music where you assume that the more brilliant the composer, the more complex and fleshed out the music is going to be. That is sometimes true, but not always. Andrew Lloyd Webber, we know, is more than capable of creating very, very complex music. But for this song, he chooses to go very, very simple. And I would argue it is significantly more effective than if he were to, for example, choose to go very, very complicated on this song. Look at this first bar here. This is what the piano player is supposed to be playing. In the entire bar, there's not a single note in the piano part that doesn't come from the basic major triad, the most basic of all chords. This is a D flat major triad, so it starts with D flat, and then we get F and A flat. So every single note that the piano player is playing here is either a D flat, an F, or an A flat. And then the next bar is the exact same as well. So we not only have the same major triad without changing the harmony, but even the rhythm is exactly the same two bars in a row. So it's this extremely, extremely simple piano part. Then we get the first note in the entire piano part that isn't in the D major triad, and it goes from this to this. Ready? Do you, you ready to hear this massive difference? That's it. It's just this one note that moves a semitone. That's it. Then we start to get a few more complicated chords here, but even this which is outside of the key signature, this C-flat. Just leads us right back to that D-flat major. So it's extremely, extremely simple music. The chords are all basic triads. Um, and if there is a note that's outside of it, it's like a very small note in one section of the piano part. Then, the fact that He's gone so simple for so much of the song means that when there is one little element of complexity, it really, really stands out. When Christine comes in with her vocal line on Say You Love Me, we get this D flat major chord, same as before, except for now we get this note in the right hand, this E. So instead of just being D flat, F, and A flat, we now add the E-flat and listen to how different it makes the sound. There's the, the normal, plain, boring major triad, and then when we add that E-flat, it becomes so much more rich and warm. Do you hear the difference? This is with the added E-flat, and this is without. There's so much more warmth. So all of a sudden, we're adding more complex chords on this chorus. It's still not very complex. It's still just one note added to the major triad, but because we've been doing just ma major triads the whole way, this tiny little added complexity feels incredibly emotionally rich in comparison. Then we look at the melody line, and Christine has this fascinating melody line where she has this huge jump down. We go from, say you love me every waking moment. These huge leaps in the melody feel very, very emotional. There are songs that only have a range of one octave in the entire song, right? That's from a D flat to the next D flat on the piano, for example. That's an octave. In this one jump, Christine goes from an E flat, which is even higher, all the way down to a D flat. So Christine jumps all those notes. Say you love me every waking mo, and then another big jump, moment. So there are these huge leaps, and the fact that the leaps are so big makes them very, very emotional. Think about the difference between the sound of that big leap, love me 
every waking, as opposed to if it was a very small leap. For example, if it was, say you love me every waking moment, if there weren't those big jumps, the melody would sound a lot more flat. But because there's that big jump, it feels like a sigh. It feels very emotional, very sweeping, and very romantic. And because Andrew Lloyd Webber has set it up to be so simple, when we get that tiny little bit of complexity in the chorus, it just feels so emotional by comparison. Um, then we get another little bit of complexity here. Again, we're taking the major triad, but all we have to change is that instead of putting the D flat on the bottom, we just take the F and put that on the bottom. And that's called an inversion because you're inverting the chord. One of the notes that was supposed to be in the middle is now inverted to be at the bottom. It's still the same triad, so we still only have D flat, F, and A flat, but because we're inverting it, it gives it a little bit more complexity and a little bit more character. And that leads us very nicely with this C, which is a passing tone which connects the two, uh, the two chords. It leads us very nicely to the minor chord. And that transition from major to minor literally feels very bittersweet. There's something very, uh, uh, like, there's, there's su such a contrast there between that major and then the minor. And because everything else around it is so simple, those small, small changes are extremely, extremely effective. Then again, here, we're counting in 4-4 four, four time, right? We're counting, say you love me every waking moment. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. We're always counting in four. But here, we get a bar of two and then a bar of three, which combines to make like five beats. So it's basically like, it feels like we're adding an extra beat. Instead of this being in four, four, we get it in like two plus three, so we get it in five. Um, in 4-4, four, four, it would sound like this. Promise me that all you say is true. That's all I ask of you. Right? But because we get that one extra beat that we're not expecting, I always say music affects us by surprising us. Music affects us by subverting our expectations. Here, because we get that one extra beat and we have to wait an extra beat for that line, it's very... Uh, it, it's... It, it, creates this tension that is very emotional. Um, Promise me that all you say is true. Boom, that's all I ask of you. Just that one extra beat is so, so emotional. And then we've basically set up everything we need to know for the entire song already. That's it. Everything else is just a repeat of that and a change in the dynamics. So for example, here, um, instead of just playing the D-flat major chord, now we have these violins coming in with the added 16th note. So they have this moving line, which is, which is beautiful and just adds more movement, just builds the emotion, but the chords and the melody are exactly the same as before. And then by the time we get to the end, they're singing the same thing together, but... Where is it? Here we go. They're singing the same thing together in harmony um, and now up an octave as well. So we have a harmony line instead of anywhere you go, let me go to. There's now anywhere you go, let me go to a harmony. And it's up the octave. So they're singing at the top of their range, which just makes it way more exciting. Anywhere you go, let me go to. And then here, we subvert the expectation again. We started the first time we heard this, we expected a bar of four, but instead we got a bar of two and then a bar of three, so five in total. Now, we get a bar of two and then a bar of four, so six in total. So it added one beat at the beginning of the chorus. At the end of the chorus, it adds two beats. It sounds like, let me go to love me, that's all I ask of. 
And so because it keeps surprising us, it keeps expanding our expectations by tiny little things, right? Every single time it surprises us in such a tiny, subtle way. Either it adds that one note to the major triad, right? Tiny little surprise. Or it adds one beat to the bar. There's just these tiny little ways of surprising us, or we just take the melody up an octave. It takes this very, very simple melody and these very simple chords, and because the melody and the chords are so simple, even just the tiniest little detail shifts create enormous emotional impact in the listener. And so that's why this song is so great, because it uses so much restraint in limiting the number of musical elements that it uses compositionally. And so every little thing has an enormous emotional impact. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Marquee is a free weekly Broadway appreciation newsletter with essays, reviews, piano talks, Broadway blasts, quizzes, and more. Sign up for the complimentary or premium edition and learn about all classes and projects at thebroadwaymaven.com. And here's an Andrew Lloyd Webber playlist.